Good. Hey, don't forget June the 24th, 25th, Susan and I are doing a marriage uh, workshop. So if you want to get involved and, and, and get delivered, um, just sign up with Susan. Uh, she's back there waving her hand. But uh, 24th, 25th, it also involves uh, you having two meals during the process of this thing because you might lose some of it uh, during the workshop. But uh, if you want to, you know, refresh your marriage or if you want to be challenged in your marriage to change, come on. Because I, 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 I will challenge you. It's a good thing. We all need challenging, don't we? I mean, the Lord always offends me, so I know that I've got to do the same to you. So, you know, doing to others is, you know. <laughs> but, uh, and I also want to say while I'm up here, you know, thank you, Father's House, for sending uh, Susan and I a bonefish uh, uh, gift card for our anniversary. That was pretty awesome, and we used it. <laughs> uh, we appreciate that. We appreciate your heart and uh, what you're doing for us and what we can do for you. But uh, I want to get on this thing called family because, uh, again, I've probably, I have maybe 40-something slides on this thing, but we probably won't ever get to it. I may be through the year as I get a chance to teach, I will continue on this thing called family. Is that all right? How many of you guys have enjoyed it so far? Have you, been, have you been following it even on Facebook or, or uh, YouTube if you've missed it? Or I've got some guys following us on podcasts. That's pretty cool. But uh, some of them have even written in, said they got delivered of some of their offenses toward other people just because we're t talking about family. And um, we need that. We've got to get delivered of our walls so that we can be together. Amen. I mean, the Lord broke down the wall to get to us that separated us so that he could be with us. So can you imagine what we're about to do with the kind of love that abides in us? It's that kind of love that compels us is about to compel us. Say compel. Sometimes compelling someone to do something, sometimes you don't want to do it, but you have to do it anyway because you're compelled to do it. We're getting to that process in our life or to that that place in our life to where we can't go any further in our life until we come to this place called love with no conditions. Say love with no conditions. Jesus had no love with no condition. He had love with no conditions. Can you imagine meeting somebody that loved you not to get you changed? He didn't care if you changed at all. He just loved you. I don't know about you, but I still deal with even being married to my wife, being married to Susan. I love her, but I can still feel a part of me wanting something back. It's because we're all trained that way. We're trained to have conditions of love and conditions for one another, but heaven doesn't have it for us. It doesn't even have the capacity to even think that way. If it did, we'd all die. You wouldn't have life if you had conditions. Even if you're a hellion in this room sleeping with somebody else's wife or trying to be perfect, you are actually being alive and kept alive because someone in heaven has no conditions. He has a river that flows from him to us that has no conditions. Not only heaven gets it, but we're getting it right now. That's beyond me. <laughs> but I want it. I am tired of loving with conditions. If you'll do this, I'll do that, right? So-and-so didn't do this for me, so I'm not going to do that for him. No more conditions. Say, no more conditions. 
I, I want to say we stopped on Colossians 2 um, about we are not completely alive until we are together. Did we stop there? Yeah, I think it's, uh, then go, yeah, the next one. Go to that next one. Where it says, uh, we fall together and we rise together. Do you have that one? There it is. I just want to uh, read the topic. You can start writing these scriptures down if you want to. But I'm telling you, the Lord's been really whacking me when I sit down in my office about this thing called love because I'm the first I'm getting delivered as I go. And I love that about God. His deliverance is so great. He'll make you throw up and make you feel like you actually did something great. Isn't that something? It's, it's weird about God. God doesn't grope in his deliverance. He actually is just so joyful that you and him get to actually hang out and you get delivered in the process. And then he makes you feel like a million dollars after you threw up a, a stronghold. That's crazy. He will reward you for giving up something that kept you from him. Can you imagine us rewarding someone that had been a hellion, and when they, when they just turned, we just never changed. We were, we were glorifying them before, and we glorify them after. That would really change a lot of things that we, we see about each other, wouldn't it? I would celebrate you when you had a stronghold, and I would celebrate you when you got rid of it. <laughs> Anybody home tonight? It's dark in here. <laughs> the scripture, I, I put a title to this one. We fall together, say we fall together, we fall together. and we rise, we rise together. We are one body now. We were, we were separated, but now through Christ, he's put us back to being together. See, the foundation on the earth was to be one. When he made Adam and Eve, he didn't say Adam and Eve. He said, I made them. Let us make man. And when he made man, he made Adam and Eve. So in him, there was no division. But when the enemy came in and caused one to think on their own instead of through God, there was a division that came forth. And then you had through the through all of the Bible, through all of those centuries, you have all this division that's going on between families, right? Abraham even had some problems with his family, didn't he? Mr. Faith. And there was family problems all throughout the whole earth, throughout centuries. And then here comes this man that does the opposite of it, and he loves the ones that are divided even from him and the ones that are divided from one another, and he puts the whole thing back together because that's the way it was in heaven. And that's the way it was when he made it upon the earth. And so he didn't just come to die for our sins, but he came to put us together as what? He came to put us together as one because when he made us, he made us as... So whatever we do to one another, we do to... Because we're all connected to him. Right? Right? So anything that comes out of our mouth toward each other, we're actually doing it toward God. That's, that's strange to me, but boy, that really corrects my living of how I approach people. Say approach people. You ever approach people with something, something in your mind before you start talking? Hmm? You already get a wall up, don't you? You got to check them out first. Remember, sniff them a little bit before you take them home. They got to be okay with you. Whoever said they got to be okay with you? Where'd that come from? Where's that written in the Bible? Because every one of us was a hellion. Every one of us was a sinner, and he came and loved you right where you were. Even while you were dead in your trespasses. He died for you. That's crazy, isn't it? That means he was in love with you while you were a hellion. 
So whether you accepted him or not, he was going to die for you anyway. That is, uh, that's unreal. And I think forever and forever and forever and forever we're going to keep getting revelations of that love of Jesus for our life so that we can wake up to who we are. Wouldn't you like to wake up to who you really are? Mm Mm-hmm. Let's read 1 Corinthians verse 20, 1 Corinthians 12. But now indeed there are many members, yet what? Then 1 Corinthians 12, 26, is as, and it says, And if one member suffers, say one member. All members suffer with it. Y'all really get that? All members Most of the sickness that happens in the body of Christ is not from just the devil. We create it. Because when you're divided from the body and if you choose to divide the body yourself, you become the enemy of the body which brings pain. But if you, we ever got healed of the very things that cause us to destroy the body, well, the body would start coming back together. Because you don't realize when you're cutting the body off, you're suffering and also the person that you're cutting off is suffering double times that. Because if you're actually suffering, that person's going to be suffering. But then they're going to be even suffering worse if you hurt them. Oh, come on. I've, heard, I've cut myself plant, fishing. Yes, I love to fish. And I'm a hunter. I have cut myself Uh, being careless, cut it wide open, blood spurting, and at the same time when I cut myself, I start telling myself how bad I am. You sorry, no good, I just can't believe you. That's about how it feels. I felt not only emotionally suffering because I felt like an idiot, but as I'm squirting blood, I'm suffering as well. That's what happens when you start hurting one another. They not only start hurting emotionally, but they start hurting physically. And then bacteria gets involved. (laughs) And all types of things start setting up in those wounds. But if we ever start waking up to Jesus and who He really is, then we would be either the medicine or the band-aid or the one that covers those cuts until they're healed. Because when you cover someone when they're not really disqualified to be covered, guess what? You're the one that's getting healed. I don't know about you, but it takes a lot for me to cover somebody that I really don't think should be covered. And I remember being a part of Morningstar, Rick Joyner would always appoint me to to restore someone that was in ministry, and I'd want to just throw up on him. Because it was always someone that I just did not like. That's exactly right. I remember them, a group of them from across the United States got on a phone call they called me up. I didn't know they were all on this thing. There were a bunch of generals on the other line. It was like a group call. And they said, Brad, we want to, uh, no, he didn't say we. He said, I want you to tell me about so-and-so. What do you see on him? And I said, well, he's got this problem, and he's got that problem. He's using his prophetic gift to destroy his, God's children. And, and then he gets on, then he says, okay, boys, he's the one qualified, right? And they said, and they all went, yes, he's qualified. I went, who is this? I said, qualified for what? And he goes, well, we all have been praying, and the Lord brought your name up to restore this guy. I said, well, I'm getting a raise. <laughs> you know what that meant, don't you? That means I'm manifesting already, and I don't want to do it. You have to pay me to restore it. You have to pay me to love this guy. But God didn't have to get paid to love you, did he? He volunteered. And I said, well, he said, when I said I'm going to have to have a raise, he said, 
He said, your raise and your payment will be the next level you go to by loving this man. And I was like, the next level you go to by loving this man. Well, I went to a new level, all right. I went to a new level of deliverance. Because <laughs> this man dealt with homosexuality. And being a redneck, I had a little deal about homosexuality. Come on. Yeah, I can talk about it. I don't care what political stuff says. Uh, I had a thing. Y'all got things. Don't be looking at me like you're pure. You got things. There's certain things you don't like. And back then, them, that thing was that thing, and I got delivered to that thing. And when I got delivered of it, I saw something, I, thought, I saw that thing as God. And it was his image that I was ministering to. I was just looking through my thing instead of the Lord's thing. Man, well, praise the Lord. <laughs> Tweet that one. So if all members suffer with it, or if one member is honored, say honored, honored, all the members rejoice with it. So if one makes it, we all make it. Oh, that ought to be enough to get us selfish. To push one another to make it. Because if you get somebody to make it, you're making it. Right? Now you are the what? the body of Christ, and members individually. And here's what he told me this morning, because I added this one this morning. If our beliefs as Christians divide us from others, it's not Christianity. That's what he told me flat out this morning. Any type of belief that you have that divides you from the world, he told me world, that divides you from the world, it's not me. And I, I sat there and cried because I, re I realized some of my beliefs have stipulations and if I've got stipulations I've got an area that's not true Christianity it's part of the enemy's belief and I said where is it he said I I did it John 3 16 talks about it God so what? So, now we're Christians, aren't we? Doesn't matter where you are. We're all dealing with certain stuff. But he's holy, pure, unadulteratedly pure, pure religion. Pure beliefs, everything around him's pure. Yet his belief was, let's get down there with them. Holiness, part of holiness is when you don't divide yourself from one another. Holiness is a part is when you get so in love with God that you want to baptize your whole destiny into someone else's. God so loved the world that he gave his favorite thing to us. Now, if I was his son, I would have said, you love the world more than me. But that can't be true because his son was this, had the same DNA. So his son couldn't wait to get here either. So there was no prejudice there. So God comes out of a, what we would call a holy place and makes himself of no reputation and then makes himself as us, sinful flesh, and walks around with us and loves us right where we are. And his mindset has not even changed. That's true religion. Because God comes 
and he lends us his son. And when he lends us his son, he requires us not to have to pay back. He doesn't even think of paying you paying him back. If he did, God himself would be divided. Oh, come on. But yet we think in conditions. But God has given us the same spirit that raised him from the, from the dead to abide in us so that we can live the same mentality here on the earth because if we continue to live in conditions we will continue to be divided but what if they do me wrong who cares you're not responsible for their actions you're only responsible for your own and our responsibility is just live like God <laughs> Just live the life of Jesus to where the true religion compels you in such a way that you want to give your favorite thing to the whole world. That you want to come out of an, and I hate, I'm going to use this, a cult type mentality where you're trying to set yourself apart, waiting on everybody to come in instead of us jumping out into the world and baptizing our best thing that we've got, and that's God's love. Because church can be a cult too. When it starts being, how can I say, uh, segregated. But what if the church was full of nothing but sinners and everybody was attracted here, didn't matter where they were. The whole place was just packed with people that just would offend you. If they started running here and wanting to be here, not because the revival's going on and the Spirit of God is here, what if we were here? And everybody knew that you could come but just as you are, and no one would try to get you saved. They would just try to love you. Because it's the love of God that compels us to repent. Oh, come on. I'm not going to change you if I try to preach to you. No man can change your soul. Well, I, I went over and changed his mind. No, you didn't. You probably wore him out so bad that he just faked it. <laughs> I've, talked to peop I've talked to people that said... You know, I don't think I was ever saved. I said, why? He said, well, I, I did the Lord's Prayer, but I did it well, just intimidated by an old preacher. Oh. Mm. And I've been a hell you that. Nothing's changed. I said, because you never got your heart turned. You just got preached at instead of love. Well, what do I do? Just hang out with me for a while. And just watch Jesus. Just hang out. Don't worry about it. God's got you back. And when it's time, you're going to know it. you got to be kidding me. No, I'm not kidding you. Walk with them for about three days. It only lasted three days. Walk with them for about three days. And, and they said, they said uh, all right, got to have him. I said, why? He said, because you loved me that day about that whole thing. You weren't even offended that I felt like I wasn't saved. I said, well, no, I know you're not. That's why I wanted you to come, come love on me and I'll love on you and maybe you'll see it. He said, I got it. And we prayed. Holy Ghost came, smoked him, gave him tongues. All kinds of stuff. He didn't know what to do. And the thing about, I love this, and I, I, I'll say this as my opinion, not God. He was saved the right way. 
And when he was saved the right way through God's love, guess what he started doing? That was his foundation. Just go hang out with people and let them walk with you. You walk with them. And they'll start seeing Jesus. Lord, I'm mercy. Can you feel the presence of God in here? I, I don't know about you, but he is, he, he's, I, I, I just want to lay down for a minute. Oh, Lord. Go to this next one. We can't enter into certain dimensions of God without being together. Say that with me. We can't enter into... We can't enter into certain dimensions without what? Being together. How many of you guys have always wanted to go to the next dimension? How many of you guys, man, where are you guys? Does anybody want to go higher? Okay. Okay, we got four. All right. Five, give me five, give me six, give me six, seven, 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 seven. <laughs> and you sometimes feel like you're stuck. You prayed, you may be in fast and made yourself mad because you just, you fasted for nothing because some book told you if you fast long enough, you'll go into the next dimension, pull on God's tongue, you know, and you go to that next level, right? Well, what if it's because you're not connected to the right people? What if your next level is loving someone that God puts in your life that will take you there? Kind of like Elijah and Elisha. Or like Jesus. Jesus couldn't go to these higher dimensions without having a family. Oh, gosh. He's not going to be a lone ranger, so he has to go find the very ones that he probably didn't even like. How'd you like to be one that caught, picks a Peter or a tax collector? He was tempted on all points, wasn't he? I'm sure he was tempted when he looked at me. You know, I, Lord, we got to pick, well, it's my father's will anyway. Have you ever been around people you know you're supposed to be around and it offends you, but you got to get over it? You have to overcome by the because the blood of the Lamb is not some blood that comes out of heaven. In other words, you have to choose to live like Jesus at that perfect moment. You choose to walk in the spirit of love instead of the spirit of Brad. And so when I choose to do that, I overcome my old self. And then I enter in to what I always wanted. By being connected to the person that I really didn't want to be connected to, but it was my next step to the throne. <sighs> Y'all ever seen stepping stones? You ever put them in your yard? Are they all alike if they're stones? Are they all alike? No. But boy, when you step on them, it's getting you to your place. And you're not looking at the stones going, I'm not going to step on that because that's got an edge on the left side. You don't realize we are living stones. Peter talks about it. And we're all cut out differently. Say so you're cut out differently. I mean, look at you. Look at, I mean, look at our faces, our noses, and everything. Our ed we got all types of edges. And because we've got edges and we're cut differently, we go, I'm not going to walk with that girl. I'm going to tell you why. She got a problem there. But you got to realize, no, she's perfect fit for you to get you to your next spot. She's the stone or that next level you've been praying to God for. See, Jesus was that cornerstone that the builders... Re oh my, that means he wasn't man-made. He was cut out by God that didn't fit perfectly in their system. Uh, 
And how many of you builders in here look at them stones that come in your life going, uh-uh. No, sir. I'm not building my life with that person. That was funny. <laughs> but you could be missing the very cornerstone that could actually set you up to your next level. But it's Jesus in a man suit coming completely different. That's why he would appear differently to his disciples because he was training them to not to look by the flesh, but to be judged by the Spirit. So when he would come in a different form, they would have to catch him. Say, catch him. And he would not look like he did before. But he always had edges. He never fit into the human mind, but he would fit in the spirit mind if you could get in it. So he had to make them judge by the spirit or by the fruit instead of by their own fleshly mind. Because if you judge one another by the flesh, guys, oh, come on, we'll all slap each other senseless. We're not one perfect person, including this preacher, that is not perfect. We ain't, we ain't nobody. I just wanted to jack slap somebody last week. I knew I wasn't perfect. I'm just being real. Somebody's got to be it. But what if we really saw each other as stones and we would see that the edges that you have or the edges that we have with one another is actually helping us get there? Because when you try to change someone, that's only telling yourself, I'm not changing. And Jesus never did that. He had a crazy family. And the thing about it, God picked him. Say, God picked him. And God is trying to say, hey, if you look at the disciples and how Jesus and them got along, that's the way it is in heaven. I don't change you when you come up here and cut you out into a brick to where everything's perfect and you sit at a button-tuck purple chair and just worship me for the rest of your life. You come as you are. You can come boldly before the throne of grace. So you look at Jesus' family on the earth, it reflected the type of family and the type of attitude that is in heaven. And guess what? Love covered them all. All. And that's what's happened in heaven right now. Love's covering a multitude of weird people. Say weird. Weird people. Look at each other and say, we weird. We weird. I mean, we might as well just get over it. We're weird. Let's, your, <laughs> let's read Ephesians. Y'all okay? And you go to that next slide if you can, where we can't enter into the dimensions. Ephesians 2. I'll read it to you while they're getting to it. Ephesians 2, 4 through 8. Tell me when you're there. You there? Say, we're there. All right. But God. Say, but God. Who is rich in mercy because of his great what? Love with which he. That means, you know what, you know what Paul's saying? Uh, go ahead and get ready because you're just a bunch of no goods anyway. God loved you. Which makes you great. I love that. Even when you were dead, say, dead, when you were dead in your trespasses, Made us, say us, he didn't say me, he said us. He made us alive to what? To together. Because that's the way God is. God's together. 
He's not separated. He doesn't have the Baptist over here in heaven, and then we got the Methodists here. And you got Catholics over here, and you got this other religion here, and, you, and y'all just, it's all freeing God, and you can love one another. No. Everybody's in one place together. There's no divisions. Why? Because God's not divided in his mind. And if you're divided in your mind between God or people, then you'll divide yourself even geographically. Oh, gosh, I won't get into that. But, but that's the way denominational things grew. It divided. It divided us. It's too, I won't get into all the definitions, but it means partly to divide. And we don't need division anymore. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of division. The reason I'm divided in my mind is because we've been divided from one another. It has nothing to do with me just being uh, uh, sorry, no good, and I need to go to the, get rid of my, all my stronghold and go to prayer and get delivered, and I need the prayer line, and I need the fire tunnel. And I... Part of the reason why we're divided and having trouble in our minds is because we are globally divided from one another. And you can feel it in your mind, but the enemy keeps trying to make it personal on you so you can stay divided from God. In other words, you start analyzing yourself because something's wrong with me because I'm acting this way and something wrong. No, it's because the person that you're probably connected to is having a problem too. And some of the overwhelming pain that we go through mentally has nothing to do with your problem. You're feeling the problem of the body of Christ that's divided. Because you no longer live, it is Christ where? Where is it? Where, where is he? He's in us. So Christ in you can feel everything in his body. So you no longer live, you're actually feeling the pain and the, and the sorrows and the things that are going on in the body of Christ. But the enemy over there throws some religion at you and says, man, I'll tell you what, you need to go to deliver so-and-so so you can get delivered because you got this problem with him. And that makes you a, a slave instead of a king that can sit there and feel all of the sorrows. And when you're feeling the sorrows, you don't personalize it. You start praying. Father, make them one. He's feeling the pain and the division that's going on in Gethsemane. And he's sweating drops of blood. He's even asking his father, let this cup pass from me, because he's actually feeling what's coming. The body of Christ is not going to want to drink the next cup, but he's going to pray. There's going to be another body that's going to come up and say, I, I don't want to do this, but I'm going to drink it anyway. Make us one. Because I don't want to be divided. If it takes me being one by letting go and dying and they kill me, I'm going to do it, and I'm going to continue to pray for everyone. Because I'm yours. And you're mine. And they are mine. This is my family. So don't judge them. I want you to forgive them. Because they don't know what they're doing. I know they put me on the cross and I'm bleeding on my side and I know I'm strung out. But forgive them. That's a possessed man of love. Totally out of joint and still thinking about you. When he rightly should have said, it's a shame we did it. Just open the ground and swallow them. That's probably what I would have done. 
Kill them, Lord, for they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> right? He's made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you've been saved and raised us up. What? Ooh. He raised us up to what? Together. And made us what? Sit together. Oh, man. I used to tell, I used to think, man, I am called. I have got an authority of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. And then I realized I didn't, there were certain areas I didn't have authority in. But boy, I'd quote it. I got all authority, praise the Lord. And, and the Lord, just stay quiet until I get old enough to realize I'm stupid. <laughs> and I realized the authority I needed was someone else to be with me. Because you can't have that full authority here on the earth unless we're all together. Oh, boy, that really makes, that, that's rubber meeting the road right there, doesn't it? Because the Satan mentality, it's all about my calling instead of about me thinking about yours and you thinking about mine. I will ascend. That was the mentality of the underworld. That's the mentality of religion, of the religious spirit, to make you think as one instead of making you think corporately as a body. Because if something happens to you, something's going to be happening to me. Wouldn't you like to be so sensitive to the body that when someone is actually hurting, you can pick up the phone and actually call them? You don't even, nobody has, nobody has to have prayer lines in or, or prayer chains. Because if we're all connected, we're feeling one another. I've woken up depressed. I'm thinking, man, I'm just not, I don't know if I'm going to make it. I'm just sick of this. And the Lord will remind me what he's telling, what I'm trying to tell you now. And he'll go, uh, that's not you. You're feeling Stephen. Not that Stephen, but you're feeling Stephen. Why don't you call him up? When I call him up, I'll go, Get up out of your bed. You've been thinking about killing yourself. You're just being attacked. Let's go. But Brad, I'm not worthy. I said, I know that. That's why we're qualified. Get up and let's go. And just calling him, just calling him and him hearing a voice on the other side made his whole life. He didn't have to scream out he needed help. Part of the body felt it. Can you imagine? There wouldn't be no screamings for help anymore. Every joint would start supplying what it needed. Guys, this is coming on the earth whether you like it or not. And in the coming days, I just want to warn you, you're either in or out. It's going to be as in the days of Noah. You're either in the family of God and you get together and you build together or you're completely out. And those that can't make it will come to their wits end. Because there is a line drawn in the coming days. There's a plumb line dropping. It's just right now he's sending out his messengers to yell, come on in now. We got to get together in. We got to get together now. Drop all your stuff and let's get together now. But I love it because it's delivering part of me that likes to have his own way. But part of my way is actually doing some of your way. Oh, get that one. What would make me more joyful is if I found out, like Stephen was talking about, uh, one that I'm connected who wants to do something, and I get so happy, and I'm so engrossed in loving them that I want to do it more than I want to do something of myself. And we get them to their destiny, and before you know it, I'm standing in mine. But I had no realization that I was going through the steps to get to mine 
while I was helping the other person. Because you do realize when Jesus died or when he was on the cross, he did that by trusting his Father. He did it all by blind faith. He did it all because he loved you so much. And whether his Father raised him up from the dead or he went to hell with you or for you for eternity, he was going to do it. He wasn't banking on him actually being raised. He was banking on you being raised. That's what he was banking on. He wasn't banking on, well, I'm going to raise him. I'm going to show him. Everything. I'm somebody. I'm resurrection power. No. He was banking on you getting up. And the strangest thing about it is that when he goes down into the depths of the earth, he doesn't bring himself up. He brings everybody with him. Say, with him. He, and when he goes down, he could have thought about himself. Right, Roger? He could have thought about himself and go, well, Father's called me up, and y'all did wrong. But I'm going to show you my glory by ascending in front of you. Pass the buckets. Oh, come on. That's, hey, that's the kind of mentality right now. Yet he looks around in that darkness as he's the only light in the center of the earth. And all these bug eyes are looking at him like, my God. And they start to rejoice because he is the one that will take you all up. They were waiting for him. There are ones that in the depths of darkness that are waiting for the body of Christ to somewhere get out of that ascended mode and lower themselves into a dark world to where they start seeing a person that will actually take them up with them. One person. One God. One body of Christ. Because the way we go up is to go down. When I pray, I don't go, I'm pressing into the dimensions. I go, Lord, just keep dropping me lower. Drop me lower. If you have to cut my legs out from under me, drop me. That's where I want to be because that's where you are. Because you are lowly. Gentle. And I want to be just like you. That's what we're going to look like. That's what you're going to look like. And you will not even be aware of self anymore. You'll only be aware of not only God, but you'll be aware of one another. You will actually know one another. We haven't taken the time to know one another, have we? That's why there's so much suicide. Nobody's there for. And you can't say, well, nobody's been family to me. Well, it's because you're not doing it. Do it you do it first, and God will cause a massive wave of love to not only hit you, but it'll, it'll cause people to be drawn to your own life. Start hanging around people you don't like. I guarantee you, you'll have to have love. Or start asking the Lord, ask the Lord, give me the love of God, the Christ of love that compels me. You know what will happen? People you don't like starts coming around. They start coming around your life. That's the way he will compel you to love. Because he's different than us. God does not line up with the way it should go. 
it lines up the way he goes. Then we get in with him and you find out that his way is much higher than your way. And you find out that the thoughts of God that you didn't like to do are actually better than the thoughts that you were living with. Because I don't know about you, living in Brad's mind is not fun. Is it fun to live in the flesh in your mind? It's not fun. Okay, raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages, say ages, in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace, I love that, of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Now go to the next slide and we'll go home and eat and buffet our body. Here's, you might want to run, write this one down because it really made me manifest. It's time to love in spite of our differences. Christ died for all, not just for the ones we pick. Oh, come on. Come on with me. Right? How many of you guys, oh, Lord. I'm having to hang out with leaders I don't like. I'm having to talk to leaders. Oh, they're going to call again. Yeah, that was, that's your real tribe. That's my real tribe. Let's say there's some, give me two volunteers. Come on up. Brandon, come on up here while you're walking. Well, I'm going to surprise you. Stand right there with him and just face me. Y'all two face me. All right. Stand up here, Lisa. All right. We, I'm, I'm familiar with Lisa, and uh, I think she's a wonderful person. Great Christian. Hallelujah. Praise God. She's on the ministry team. <laughs> then we've got a, a, a worker that, and I'm, not, I'm only using you as an example, right? Okay. He smells like smoke, cusses a lot, and works on, uh, as a brick mason. And uh, this guy right here is about as religious as you can get and can't, mean and just, just a junkyard dog. Well, there you go. Uh, which one am I going to be attracted to? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you. Not them, but let me pray for you. See, I'm saying, I'm saying to the Lord, you died for this one. So the love, here we go. Now get this one. Now the love that I feel for her is right. But the prejudice that I have in my heart through old religion is keeping me from having that same love for her with him and him. Because the same feeling I have for her is the same feeling I have for him and same feeling I have for him. And what I have learned is when I, I, I can look at Lisa and I can feel it. But then I can look at the Breck Mason and I, I, see a, I see a wall come up immediately. And part of that love drops. But I will remember what I felt with Lisa because I know her, but I may not know him, him physically, but God does and he has the same love. Oh, come on. So I choose to lean on the love instead of my prejudice. So what I will do is I will think about Christ's love that I have for her, because that's a cheat sheet. I will think about it, and it will put me in a position to where I can actually see him. And, I, and when I see him, I'll go, oh my gosh, how you doing, man? Lord, have mercy. It's been a long time. And I, I, may even say, I may even say his name. Joe, I really love you. Tell your mama, uh, Marianne, I said hello. And he'd freak out. Because that's my brother. And then I look over here at the religious one, and I just want to get angry like him. You know why? Because I'm feeling the suffering that's going on. Oh, come on. See, when you feel a religious person, and I, I deal with religious folk, God, God told me, you're gonna be, I'm calling you to the religious folks. And I said, please don't do this. 
But as soon as I feel this anger, and I, I, my flesh wants to agree with you. You ever, been, you ever been around religious folk like that? And you just want to shut and slap them, you know? It, but what I feel is the anger, but, and my flesh loves flesh. But I know that I'm discerning what's tormenting him. So instead of taking it personal, I go, bless you, brother. I will feel the pain he's going through, so that requires me to give him more love that will whack that religious stuff off of him. Now, I used to use my prophetic gift without him opening his mouth, and I'll go, you have a religious spirit, brother, and where you got it was like in 1996 when you were in the Pentecostal movement, and so-and-so said this about you, and so-and-so said that. Uh, and, and while I'm saying, being prophetic and high-level hallelujah, I'm destroying him. Because that isn't what he need. He don't need a prophetic gift. He needs God's love because he never got it. So the first thing I'll do, I, man, and I do this religious folks. I look at them and I can, and I'm not saying you're religious, please. <laughs> I, 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 I'll, I'll do it. I, this love, love will come all over me because I know what it's like to have a religious spirit because guess, guess, guess who had a really bad one? And I'm still getting delivered to some of mine. Come on, raise your hand. Uh, get, right? If you say you got delivered of yours and you're perfect, oh, you got a religious spirit. The love of God will come all over me. And the man, and, and I don't say, I, this is just my opinion. I feel more love for him than I did Lisa. Why? Because he needs it more. Yeah. You know what will happen? I'll go and I'll, I'll take him as a brother and I'll start hanging out with him. You know why? This is where I was called. I can love all them the same way, but I'm called to walk with these. This is the part of body that I'm supposed to be connected with. Now, I hate it before. And I beg God not to do it. But once I really truly started seeing this, I couldn't wait for the next religious person. Why? I'd get, de get delivered a little bit more. Right. Go to another level. And I'd go to another level, and I'd actually get to love a little bit more. Are you with me? All right, you can sit down. Thank you. Let's read this and we'll... i tell you what, stand up. Let's stand up. Oh, you were going to take an offering, weren't you? Come on up here. I want, to, I want to read this together before we go eat. Stephen's going to take up an offering for me. They said they felt like they needed to take an offering for me. Is that all right? Boy, I know that thing's going to be multiplied now. That's what I'm talking about. 2 Corinthians 5. The love of Christ compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all. that those who live should live no longer for themselves. That's what it's like to walk like God. You no longer live for yourself. Because living for yourself is tormenting. He knows that's one of the foundations of torment is living for yourself. Who should... Sh who lives should no longer live for themselves, but for him. Say for him. Who died for them and rose again. He died for them and then he rose them. <laughs> Lord, we want to be family. Because you're our family. You died for every person in this room to show you that you love us all with no conditions. 
you spread yourself out on the cross like a tapestry to cover the whole world because you loved them so much. And Lord, I, I pray, we pray as a family that you would awaken the love of the cross, the love of Jesus within us to the point that we no longer live for ourselves, but we live for you and our brothers. We live even for the ones that we normally wouldn't pick. Lord, I pray that you'd even make us like you to where we open our arms, open it wide to cover those that we would feel that don't deserve it. Because we don't deserve it, you, and you keep covering us. So I pray that you make us all a covering for not only for one another, but for this whole world. That we would go out preaching the gospel by living it. That our lives would preach the gospel. Because we're reading about yours. We're reading about a man that didn't even have to open his mouth. It's how you live, preach the whole kingdom. If you never said a word, we'd get it. Because the way your actions were toward mankind. Let that love that possessed you possess us.